ഹിസമീലീം <coughs> 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 قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل انما انا بشر مثلكم يوحى الي انما الهكم اله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعباده ربه احدا امنا بالله Sadaqallahu al-Aliyu al-Azim for the purification of the souls and the enlightenment of the hearts and for the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited Savior Ajrallahu Ta'ala Farajahu al-Sharif enlighten your souls and the atmosphere with the recitation of salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You have probably heard of the story of the speaker that was once invited to deliver a sermon to his community. And as soon as he stood on the pulpit, he looked at the people who were anticipating and eagerly awaiting his speech. And he asked the question, what topic is? am i going to be speaking about immediately the community or the people who are attending said your topic will be so and so once they finished he said if you know what i'm going to be talking about there is no point me talking about it so he came down from the pulpit they asked him to come back again and this time they agreed that they would not reply to his question or in fact they'll answer in the negative when he asked what is the topic of my discussion there was silence he said if you have no idea what i'm going to be talking about in fact that would make me in a difficult position therefore i'm not going to speak to you and he came down and finally they had agreed the plan that half will say that they know and half will say that we don't when they replied to this effect he said the half who know explain to the half who don't and he came down <laughs> I was informed only a few minutes ago to step in for my good friend Sayyid Mahdi and I'm delighted to be at the presence of the mu'minin the brothers and sisters who have traveled from across the world to be in this wonderful convention and who have gathered here in order to celebrate our identity our cohesiveness our adherence to the thaqalain or the thaqlain the two weighty things the book of allah and the pure immaculate infallible progeny of the holy prophet of islam muhammad al mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and i want to ask a question to begin with why are we here what is the reason and what's the cause that we have congregated and perhaps traveled hundreds of miles or thousands of miles from across the world have we pondered as to the reason that we have gathered together this is a very important question that we have to ask ourselves not only as we are here in this particular hall and this convention but in every process of our lives the purpose by which we undertake certain objectives and certain tasks in order to be illuminated and in order to get inspiration and clarification over our reason for being here let's examine the life of the most immaculate and the most perfect human being allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created 
being the final messenger of Allah, the holy prophet of Islam, Muhammad and Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now a few minutes is not sufficient to examine the biography of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Yet I wish to look at two important angles that has a direct correlation to our congregation this evening. The first is many people when they examine the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam, the first thing that they will talk about, or in fact, if you ask any Tom, Dick and Harry or any Muslim on the streets and you ask them, tell me, about the life of your prophet the first thing that they'll say is that he received this declaration or this important announcement from allah through archangel jibrail when he was 40 years old and this was the beginning yet there was something much more important and much more profound that we need to look at many people when they examine the biography of the prophet they do not look at the early years in which the foundation and the core of the existence and the life of the holy prophet of islam was established when we look at the life of this holy individual, we see that his youthful age was the age of energy, was the age of giving back to the community, was an age by which the Holy Prophet of Islam demonstrated proactiveness. Example, there was a common practice in Arabia. What was this practice? The Jahiliya, the people who used to reside at the areas in the Arabian Peninsula, they used to have a practice by which they used to usurp the money and the business of others who would come to Mecca. So you would have a caravan from Sham, from Syria, who would set up their commodities to sell and one of the leaders of Quraysh who would arrogantly walk past will take these belongings and say because you are in my vicinity then this belongs to me this caused friction this caused problems in that area to the extent that conflicts and wars began to occur between tribes. The Holy Prophet of Islam, when he was 19 years old, rose to the challenge. He came to his uncle and to the other prominent members within Arabia. And he established this treaty known as Hilful Fudul. What's this treaty? This treaty was instigated and was completed by the Holy Prophet of Islam. This treaty ensured that the tribes would come in order to engage in business in Arabia would be safeguarded and five main tribes in the Arabian Peninsula signed up to this the Holy Prophet of Islam established this at this tender young age demonstrating a very important principle that if you and I are seeking success if you and I are looking for achievement then the foundations must be laid at a young age. And the focus on the youth should be of paramount importance, number one. Number two, what is the recipe for tawfiq and success in this world? The recipe that the Quran and the Ahl al-Bayt, two important elements that we'll be examining in these few days, have presented to us. Let me ask you a question. The day of Khaybar, a young man by the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib stands to the call made by the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala through his prophet. A man by the name of Umar ibn Wadd al-Amiri who was a ferocious, brave Arab warrior who would mount on the horse to the extent that his feet would drag on the floor. He caused the Muslims the very same companions of the Holy Prophet according to the Quran to shake vibrantly when he challenged them and said, you claim to be of the followers of a religion that sends you to paradise. Come and confront me. Either you send yourself to paradise or I will do that. Yet nobody stood up except a young man three times the Holy Prophet of Islam said to him, sit down. Three times he rose up. When the Holy Prophet looked at him and said, this man is Umar ibn Wadd al-Amiri. The man replied, the young, courageous young warrior who is a youthful age. He replied back by saying, Ya Rasulallah wa ana Ali. 
يا رسول الله I am Ali ibn Abi Talib. I am somebody who has been trained under the school of prophethood. And I know what I'm doing. Rasulullah demonstrated to the others about this man and the extent of his devotion. And he gave him the permissibility to go and fight. And he achieved what he did. And when he came back with the head of this man and he placed it, in front of the Muslims, the Holy Prophet said very famously that the strike of Ali on the day of Khaybar in the eyes of Allah is better than the worship of the humans and the jinns combined in the day of judgment. Question, why? It was one strike. It was one human being. Rasulullah does not speak from himself. Rasulullah speaks from the Almighty. Everything is revelation. Question yourself. Why was the strike of Ali ibn Abi Talib more valuable in the eyes of Allah than everything else? It is because it was coupled and encapsulated with the spirit of the action, which was ikhlas for the sake of Allah, sincerity for the sake of Allah. This is what demonstrates the spirit of an action in the Qur'an and the Ahl al-Bayt. Sincerity. What am I doing this for? What's the purpose of my action? Why am I here? And the answer should always be, I am seeking Allah's pleasure. I am seeking Allah's happiness. I want to strengthen that relationship. That relationship that sometimes, you know, we have on the cell phone, mobile phone, wherever you are from around the world, we have these signals. Most of us have weak signals when it comes to connecting with Allah. Our, you know, we'll look for different places. The biggest signal we get is Mah Ramadan. You know, the mobile cell phone companies uh, enjoy themselves in the month of Ramadan. Our connection is stronger. Yet 11 months of the year, it's not as powerful. It's weak. And we complain when the cell phones are not working. How are they not working? Our dua is not answered. Our projects are not fulfilled. We do not get the tawfiq. The strength is not there. Why? Because at the initial building block of our projects, of our intentions, we have not made it clear. Who are we doing it for? What is the purpose of our endeavors, of our projects that we are? endeavoring to achieve and we are always looking for others to give us recognition we are looking for others to elevate our status yet it is the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala who is examining us and who is watching our every move in order to ensure whether we are sincere in our actions and in our deeds i remember and you've probably heard this story before that in the United States of America, a new mosque, a new center was built. And this center was to be opened by a Mawlana, by an alim. This alim entered. There were three brothers who had donated to this center. Their name was what? Ibrahim, Musa, and Kareem. Three brothers who had all contributed to ensure that this mosque would be built. When this Mawlana came and opened the center he led the first salah he led the first namaz and the first prayers he recited chapter surah al-a'la the final verse in surah al-a'la is what suhufi ibrahim wa musa the scriptures of ibrahim and musa behind him were standing the three brothers ibrahim musa and kareem you would notice that the third brother kareem is thinking why this maulana not remembering me when the Mawlana finished his salah, Kareem goes to him and said, Mawlana Saab, don't forget me in dua, please. You know, I'm also part of this organization, you know. The Mawlana wanted to teach him a lesson. In the second salah, Salatul Asr, he repeats the same chapter of the Quran and remembers Ibrahim and Musa. At the end, Kareem says, this Mawlana has a problem with me. He doesn't want to mention my name. Why is it that we are looking for this? Whereas the eternal success is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Almighty through the words of the Ma'asumin salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in highlights this very important essential quality that you and I need to inculcate in our existence and our presence. If we want success in any endeavor, if we want to ensure that our lives are the, in the epitome of the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
We need to make sure that our actions are the crystallizations of ikhlas. Our actions ooze with the love of the only beloved that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what we learn from the Holy Prophet of Islam, from the Ma'sumin salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in. Finally, brothers and sisters, we are going through interesting times, to say the least. 2011 has seen many developments in the world scene. There have been revolutions. There have been natural disasters. There have been many awaking processes. Today, there are people who have been oppressed, such as our brothers and sisters in Bahrain. There are people who have been killed indiscriminately, such as our brothers and sisters in Libya. There is widespread oppression. Tonight, let us dictate and dedicate, in fact, the first night of this convention and this bless blessed gathering to the man who will bring salvation, who am a man who will ensure that the world will be living through happiness, justice, and prosperity to the individual, to the illustrious man who will carry the illuminating light of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, we extend our warm greetings and salutations to the master of our time, Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, Ajjallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Let us begin our convention with ensuring that we pay our full allegiance and strengthen our relationship with the master of our time and let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq in order for us to be of his followers and in order for us to be of those who stand by him to spread the beautiful peaceful coexistent message of the religion of Islam let us end with the dua of the holy 12th imam bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaihi في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Thank you very much for your attention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all, grant you success and tawfiq. May He subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to perform every single action and every movement in our lives for His sake. May He subhanahu wa ta'ala ensure that the next following few days will be successful and inshallah you will all enjoy a wonderful time. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.